Welcome to another presentation by Donald L. Potter. And this is uh, July the 5th. We just celebrated the 4th yesterday, and I hope you enjoyed it. I got to watch fireworks out right out my office window. Um, the uh, Our program is called Shortcut to Manuscript because we can teach uh, students to write manuscript in a very short period of time. In fact, this is a direct path to fluent manuscript handwriting. Uh, I also have another program. It's called Shortcut to Cursive. So once you master this program, you're welcome to, to move ahead to uh, that one and to learn cursive. My websites are www.donpotter.net. That's a very comprehensive education website with lots of information on uh, a lot of topics that have to do with education and other things that interest me. It's uh, so so um, comprehensive that uh, it's probably rather complicated. Uh, it would take you a long time to read everything I published there. So may I recommend my www.blendphonics uh, org website and that by the way features my blend phonics program I'll just put here uh, blend phonics lessons and stories by Donald Potter and this is a great one of the best programs in the world for teaching uh, uh, young students to read it can be covered in four months maybe five at the most of uh, first grade and turns out fluent readers and we got uh, lessons and then there's a 62 stories comprehension questions and spelling words and I use a program called the phonovisual method which again we're not going to talk much about here but I'm just going to show you I use these two charts one for consonants one for vowels in conjunction with my book to teach students to read and I work with lots of students many students in fact come to me that have problems such as dyslexia and other things and um, I've been very successful helping them and those books are that my book is uh, very very inexpensive but and I, I show you the book because what I have students do is I have them get a wide line spiral and we if if they're sometimes I use cursive sometimes I use manuscript but but if they're coming from a public school we use manuscript and they'll write the words that we're learning because writing the words especially when they're fluent uh, at handwriting uh, helps them to um, store those words in their brain and be able to recall them for spelling and and so on okay uh, this is a table of contents we're not even going to go into that uh, you, uh, you can download my my book by by the way to get to my book you can get it from my website at the bottom of this video I'll put a link okay straight to shortcut to manuscript so if you go down to the, to the bottom of this YouTube you can click on that download the manuscript you can run it off uh, on paper read it on your computer or do like me and I just uh, uh, put it on my iPad and I put it under um, iBook and then I can just bring it up and turn the pages there and uh, the first thing I want us to notice we're going to be showing how to hold a pencil and if we're using a regular pencil I'm going to be writing with a mechanical pencil today but if you're using a regular pencil like this you're going to want to have the students Sometimes it's called tip flip grip. My kids think that's pretty cool. Tip flip grip. And you want to have the pencil, and here's a picture of it right here, uh, it, uh, illustrating. You want one finger on top, preferably not bent down like that. Uh, it's because if you hold it up like this, it takes the pressure off of your wrist and your shoulder and makes it easier to write. You should not have a lot of pressure on your pencil, no more than what's necessary to write on the page. Secondly, and I'll show you the grip right here. By the way, even if you put two fingers on top, look, your limb, like you can see I can move my hand like that. If I put two fingers on top, okay, I've seriously compromised the movement that I have available to me. If I wrap my thumb around it, like this, like a lot of students do, well then I'm writing with my fist. So again, all of these are very inefficient means of writing, and this is the correct way to hold a pencil. I cannot illustrate with my right hand because uh, I broke it in a mountain bike accident, and it may be 
a few weeks or months before I can do much writing with my right hand. So it's a good thing I taught myself to write with my left hand. I had to sign all my medical documents with my left hand and and uh, and everything. Anyway, okay. So that's how we hold a pencil, how we grip a pencil. We write, we move our hand like this. Also notice that the paper is not straight in front of us. But if you're left-handed, you're going to sh- you're going to move your paper to the right. If you're right-handed, you'll move it to the left. Now, I'm going to get this out of the way. And well, I will sh- let me see here. Let me show you this real quick. General rules. All letters set on the baseline. That's the bottom line here. Letters are parts of letters or two sizes. They're either tall or short. Tall letters or tall parts reach to the line above, but do not touch it. Short letters or short parts are halfway as tall as uh, the tall letters. And manuscript letters are made from a clock face or parts of it and straight lines. And so we have here a clock face and we're going to be using mostly the 2, the 10, the 8, and the 4. For the E, we will go from 9 to 3, but otherwise we're using a 10, the 8, the 2, and the 4. And a C, if you'll notice, as an example, starts at 2, and you just go around a circle, and when you get to the 4, you stop, and now you've got a C. So we have the clock face, then we have the lines. Notice the lines always go down. I do not use a dotted midline. You can buy that uh, paper that's got the dotted midline, but it's not necessary, and um, it may lead kids to using the visual um, uh, perception, you know, looking at things with their eyes. We actually want students to be able to read without using their eye for very much other than making sure that they're on the on the line there. So uh, I prefer not to use, in the paper I'm going to show you, uh, you can uh, just run off. It's at the end of my document. And you can buy, uh, I just buy wide line spirals at the cheap $2 wide line spirals, um, you know, the spiral notebooks for my kids. I put their name on the front of it and I send that home with my book and my phonics chart. And then they write all their words in that. So, um, uh, once they've learned the alphabet with this paper here, you can pretty well start working with that paper. Now, I'm going to, and I'm not going to be reading this. Uh, I sug- I'm going to just do this ad lib because when I try and read it and go back and forth and read and write, it makes it kind of complicated for me here. So I'm just going to go through the alphabet. I teach the alphabet in alph- alphabetical order. Most phonics or most writing programs that I'm aware of teach the alphabet uh, according to uh, the strokes and word strokes that are alike like the they'll teach all those the letters that start at two o'clock on the, and then they'll start with the letters that start with lines and so on but I prefer to go straight through the alphabet and um, because I think the alphabet is so important that it needs to be taught early it needs to be taught in order and the letter name should be taught the sounds will be taught with the phonovisual chart, but when we're doing the handwrite, the letter writing, we're going to be using letter names, not confusing the students with letter sounds. Okay, we're going to do, the, uh, let's take off here. We're going to do the lowercase letters first. We got an A. A is a short letter. It starts at 2 o'clock, and you always say uh, go up and around. So you go up and around the circle, and notice you're going through all those numbers, the 10, the 8. You come up to 2 o'clock, and then you draw a line to the baseline, and it should always set on the baseline. That's the line down here. And you have, with, when you're writing with a letter that starts at 2 o'clock, you got to move in. I came in more than I needed to, but you need to come in so that you don't hit the letter on the other side. The B is a tall letter with a short part. So we start, we stop, we st- start with a line, and notice we pull the line straight down to the baseline, we don't touch the top line, we get just a little bit below it. So we're going to draw a line to the baseline. Now without picking up your pencil, you're going to retrace, now we're going to do the small part or the short part, we retrace and we go up to 10 o'clock 
and we go around to 2 o'clock and we come around to uh, 4 and then back up to 8 o'clock. I made my letters a little bit bigger than I should have there. Um, we'll make them a little shorter here now. Notice the B starts with a line. This is very important. If you look in the mirror and make the B sound, the sound for the B, B, you'll notice that your lips come together to form a line. And if you tell your students that when you teach this, I promise you, you will not have any problem whatsoever with the confusion of the B and the D. The C, we start at 2 o'clock. So since we start at 2, we have to move over a little bit. If we start at 2 here, you know, we'll be right on top of the letter. So we're going to go at 2 o'clock. And I'm going to try to make this a little bit smaller here. And we go around the clock. So we got the 11 and the 8, and we come up to the 4, and there we have a C. If you're left-handed, you'll do a better job than I am here, but we're getting her done. A, B, C. D, this is very important. We start D starts at 2 o'clock, so we have to come over. It has a small part and a tall part. So the small part starts at 2 o'clock, just like the A and the C. So we start at 2 o'clock. Notice you say up and around, so we go up and around the clock, all the way around, we come up, let me get this over here a little better, and we hit two. Now when you get to two, you keep going, and you almost touch that top line, and you draw a, you draw a line to the baseline. Okay, did you get that? Two o'clock, up and around, up to the top line, and then a line to the baseline. Now notice the D starts with a circle. This is crucially important. I would say two-thirds of the students that come to me for tutoring start the D with a line. In other words, they'll come down and they either go around this way or they come down and they go around that way. And what happens is since the motor plan for the, the poorly written D starting with a line is similar to the motor plan for the B, then the nervous system naturally, almost inevitably, confuses these two letters. A, a second thing about the D is if, if, you, if you make the D sound and you look in a mirror, your lips form something of a circle, maybe closer to a square, but it looks enough like a circle for the kids. And so you tell them when you see a letter that starts with a circle, and has a line, make your lips into a circle. And I will tell you that I've had students that I've cured of the BD confusion in as short. And you can ask Sebastian, one fourth grader I taught. Um, he had spent over $8,000 at a popular tutoring uh, business and repeated first grade and came to me at the beginning of fourth grade. And I'll never forget, he couldn't tell a B from a D, and I wouldn't tell him. He got really frustrated with me. He said, well, if you tell me, I, can, I know the sound. I just don't know which it is. And I said, I'll cure you in five minutes. I told him what I just told you, the difference between writing the B and the D and how to look at your mouth. And uh, he never had any problem after that. In fact, after one summer tutoring, he jumped from um, a first grade to a fourth grade level. That's after spending $8,000 with a popular tutoring concern. A, B, C, D, E, okay. E, we're going to start with a line. This we start at uh, 9 o'clock, okay. And since it starts with a line, you start it close to the preceding letter. That's a rule that's never violated. So what we're going to do here, we're going to go from uh, 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, and then we go up to 2 o'clock around the circle, down to the baseline, up to 4 o'clock, and we have the E. F starts at 2 o'clock. That means we have to move over a little bit. And we go down below the baseline. Let's see if I can get it right here. And we're going to start 2 o'clock. We go all the way around to 10 o'clock. And when we get to 10 o'clock, we pull a line all the way to the bottom. And then, and that's a tall letter, by the way. And then we draw a line just above the middle in the direction we write. Now, did you hear what I said? In the direction we write. Don't say left or right. That's that's confusing to a lot of people. Um, and so, uh, 
Um, and with dyslexia, and by the way, make sure that once they've crossed the F, they don't go back. And left-handed students, by the way, tend to go that way. So you don't want that. That's going to cause a lot of problem. You want the eye movement, everything to go this way. And by the way, that was a, that's a central and distinguishing feature of blend phonics lesson and stories because in this method, we have what we call directional guidance. And that's another thing that you'll study when you study that. But this is why we are able to prevent and to cure dyslexia with the same program. A, B, C, D, E, F, G is a short letter. So we're going to start and with a part that goes under the line. So we're going to start 2 o'clock. We go all the way around a circle. Y'all got this down now, I bet. Up to 2 o'clock. Now we draw a straight line down. And now imagine another circle. When you get down to 4 o'clock, you're going to go all the way over to 8 o'clock and you stop. So that's, that is the G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The H is a tall letter with a short part. So we're going to start just below the line. We pull a line down to the baseline. Now we retrace. Don't pick up your pencil. We retrace. And then we go from uh, 10 o'clock over to 2 o'clock and we draw a line down. So that's the H. The I uh, starts with a line. Now remember the rule. All the letters go down. None of the letters go up. None of the uh, uh, manuscript letters. So we're going to start about the middle here. And we get close to the preceding letter. We pull a line all the way down to the baseline. And we go up and we put a little dot on top of that. Can you see the dot? Maybe not. Make it a little bit darker. Okay. That's the I. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. J is similar to the I. We start close. We pull a line to the baseline. Then we go down an equal distance. And we go around the circle like we did with the G. And we dot. Leave enough. Leave this close enough that you can put another letter underneath of it. A, B, C, F, G, H, I, J. K. We're going to draw. A, it's a tall letter with a short part. So we're going to get close, start with a line. So we got to get close to the preceding letter. And we're going to draw a line to the baseline. Now here we start in the middle of the line. And we draw a line in. And we draw a line out. Now notice that. In and out. That's the K. L is pretty simple. We just draw a line down to the baseline. And since it starts with a line, we follow the rule and we put it close to the L. One of the one of the tough things about manuscript is the kids get the get the spacing all wrong. So you want them when they're writing the alphabet here to put these really really close together, like I'm doing. And then when they write a word, then they're going to want to learn to leave more space between them so that they can see where one word stops and another word starts. You don't have that problem with cursive, which is one of the advantages with starting with cursive. K L M. M is a short letter. So we're going to start, and it starts with a line. So we're going to pull a line down to the baseline. Then we retrace, and we're going to do the circle thing. We're going to go from 10 over to 2. And then we retrace, and then we go from 10 over to Two, that's our M. By the way, a lot of kids start this line going up. Remember, none of the letters start with a line going up. They all go down. The N, again, starts with a line, so we're going to put it close. And we pull a line down to the baseline. Then we retrace. We go up, and then we got 10 to 2, and then down. The O. Be sure the students are not starting at 12 o'clock. With the O, we're going to start 2 o'clock. Okay. We got it. So since we start at 2, we got to move over a little bit. We're going to start 2 o'clock. We go up and around and go through all your numbers there, the 4 and back up to the 2. So that's O. P is a short letter. Uh, o, by the way, M, N, and L O are all short letters. Um, P is a short letter. And so you draw a line from the middle to the baseline. Then you go below. 
okay and then I generally retrace and then we start our clock face all the way around so we go from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock and back up to 8 o'clock O P Q now watch Q Q is different Q starts with a circle so we're going to start 2 o'clock we're going to go up and around it's a short letter by the way we go all the way around up down and then we just draw a little flag if you're using your kids are used to drawing a little curve down there that's alright too the R folks starts with a line I get a lot of students that start on the line uh, line I mean starts with a line and goes down to the baseline I get a lot of students that, that draw the R by going up that's not correct so we're going to do we're going to start in the middle we're going to pull a line down to the baseline now we're going to go up now think of your circle we're going to go over to 11 and 2 and there is our is the R and if you think of a circle right there it helps you the S is like two circles and I want to slip over here and read this the S is a short letter or oh, the R was a short letter too the S is a short letter it start um, it starts at 2 on the clock, goes up around to 10, slides across to 4, which is below 2, and back around to 8, which is below 10. Well, let's just see what that's going to look like. We're going to start 2, right? We're going to go all the way up to 10, then we slide over to 4, and then we come around. And that's not a perfect S, but it's pretty good. Um, T is a tall letter. It comes down. And then we cross it just above the midway. And notice I cross in the direction we write. You never go the other way. Always tell your students, cross in the direction we write. Um, and again, that's a tall letter. The uh, U is a short letter. And so we start in the middle. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down to 8 o'clock and we're going to come around to, to over to 4 o'clock up to 2 o'clock and then we draw a line to the baseline let me dress it up a little bit okay that's you now I'm going to skip a line here now we got room let's put it in here the V is going to be a uh, start with a line so you start put it close to the preceding letter so we can start here really close and then we draw um, we write a line in the direction we write that's what I wanted to say in the direction we write without picking up the pencil uh, then we finish the W is just two of those so that's pretty easy X we start with a line so it's going to go close to the preceding letter by the way the V and the W are, are short letters and the X is a short letter so we're going to come with a line in the direction we write and then we're going to cross it in the middle the Y um, we've chosen this Y because we want this to be uh, transition easily into cursive so we're going to use this form we're going to start with a line down it's going to be just like the U okay to start out with and we come all the way around so so we came down to the eight we come up to the four up to the two and then what we do is we draw a line down and we go down the same distance we went up now what we're going to do is we're going to make a bend here at four o'clock and we're going to go all the way over to eight o'clock so that's our Y and I prefer this sometimes I get students from the public schools or other schools that make a Y with two lines like that and I can teach that and it's okay not a big deal I prefer this and this is the one I'm going to teach you right here and hey we did it we got one more letter right the Z is a short letter and it starts with a line and listen carefully uh, in the direction that we write it, now it starts with a line so it's going to be close if you I don't know I've seen lots of students when they get to the end of the alphabet they draw the Z backwards 
Well, your students aren't going to do that because they're going to write uh, uh, in the direction that we write. So watch this. So they, they draw, uh, uh, first of all, they draw a line in the direction they write. Then we have a slant down to the baseline. And then we finish with a uh, drawing a line in the direction that we write. So there's the Z. There you have it. Now we are whew, 25 minutes. I hope to do this in a lot less time, but that's all right. I want us to look. Let me go to the capital letters very quickly. And uh, I'm not going to do those in alphabetical order. Uh, yeah, we can do them. Uh, well, we can do them in alphabetical order. Mm, let's do them. Let's do them in a stroke order here, just for fun. Uh, the C, the letters that start at two o'clock are the following letters. By the way, if you're working with pre-K, I actually like to teach the uppercase letters first. Marilyn Jagger Adams, in um, in her uh, new book, uh, ac actually recommends that and teaches the capitals first because they're a little easier to learn. Uh, but we're trying to get kids into reading, and uh, generally the schools are wanting them to write this, so, so we do that. If I was working with a little kid, I'd probably, I probably, and I've done that before, uh, you could actually teach all of blend phonics with um, uh, uppercase letters first. But anyway, so, uh, let's start with the ones that start with two. C, two o'clock, easy enough, and it goes almost all the way up. G is another, the next letter, and the G, we start at two o'clock. We go all the way around, and when we get up to 3 o'clock, okay, then we simply draw a line backwards. The O, we start at 2 o'clock, and then we go up and always go up and around. And I'm doing the best I can here with my left hand because um, I'm not left-handed. The Q, again, is going to start 2 o'clock. All these are 2 o'clock letters, so the Q starts with 2 o'clock. And then we draw a line in the direction that we write, not the other way. The S is going to be just like the other one. We're going to go from 2 to 10 to 4 to 8. So let's do that. We're going to go from 2 o'clock, almost touching the line. Then we come around, and we go all the way down, and we make a very nice S. The ones that start with a line, of course, are the A. And remember, every letter starts at the top. So start close to the top. So we come down down and then cross in the direction that we write the B we're going to come down and then I usually pick it up and we do two circles preferably with the top one a little bit bigger I think I did pretty good on that the D we start with a line and then we go up and we come around our circle there the E is pretty easy we have a uh, all, these are all tall letters too by the way the capitals we come down and then we go one two three that's pretty good the F we come down and then we have one uh, two usually that second line I make a little bit smaller a little bit shorter H pretty simple line down line down and then we cross in the direction we write, not the other way. The I is a tall letter. And then we just put two very small lines on it. The J, you're going to have to start over a little bit because the bottom of it is going to rock around. So we're going to bring the J down. We come around like that. And then I like to draw a little line at the top in the direction that we write. K is lined down and then we just start at the same height in and out K that's pretty good L tall letter and we have a little line that direction the M is one line down then the rest of it's all continuous stroke so we're gonna come down up and then we draw a line straight down the end starts with a line down, and then we come uh, at an angle in the direction we write, and then we go straight up, if I can do that with my left hand. P 
I write that a lot with Potter in my name. So lying down, then we pick up our pen and we go around our little circle there from 10 to 2 to 4 to 8. Uh, the R is just like the P there, okay? But when we come around, then we come out like that. It's pretty, pretty close. Um, T, we're doing the line letters. The T is going to be straight down and in a nice cross at the top. Remember, don't put it on the line up there, just close. The U is just like the other U that we did. And the Y starts with a line. It's just like the other only. We make it bigger. And so we come down like that. Now the um, the letters uh, V, W, and X, and Z are just like the lowercase letters. First make this, uh, the line with a slant. Anyway, here we go. Uh, we have um, the V. W, the X, remember it's the slant first in the direction we write, and the Z start close to the top line and a line in the direction we write. They will never confuse these if you teach them in the direction we write. Z. Now, sorry, we're 31 minutes. I plan to do this in a lot less, but let me go. We're going to do the numbers really quick. Techniques for writing the numbers. All numbers should be made halfway between the size of a short letter and a tall letter. The numbers 8, 9, and 0 begin at 2 on the clock. Since they are taller than short letters, elongate them somewhat vertically. Elongate means to kind of like stretch them. So I'll move over here. And the 8, we're going to start at 2 o'clock. And we go up and around a circle, around just like an S. And then we come and we terminate it there. The 9 starts at uh, 2 o'clock. We go around the circle and then we bring it down to the line. And the O again start at 2 o'clock, not 12 o'clock. 2 o'clock, we go up and around a circle. And so that is the is that one. Uh, 1, pretty simple. Simply a line down. 4, we do a uh, line down and angled in the direction or in the direction we write and then we put a, another one like that the five is actually going to start with a line down then we go from ten o'clock all the way over to eight o'clock and then we draw a line in the direction we write the six be careful on the six be sure that you hit the baseline and come back and hit the baseline that way that won't be open and they won't get it uh, confused. Um, num uh, okay, N and the number seven is going to be a line in the direction we write, okay, and in a slant. My slant's not so good, but that'll do. The two starts at 10 o'clock, and uh, listen carefully, two and three begin at 10 on the clock. Note that no lowercase letter starts at 10. So these two numbers should be thoroughly understood by students who show confusion in direction. Uh, so here we go. The 2 o'clock, the uh, 2 starts at 10 o'clock on a circle and we go around the circle and down and then I like to make a little loop like that. And 3 also starts at 10 o'clock on the circle. And if you start at 10 o'clock, they're not going to be writing these letters backwards. How many kids did you see writing letters backwards and say, oh, they got dyslexia? Well, maybe they just weren't taught right. Or maybe they had dyslexia and we were able to uh, prevent its further development. In any case, we're going to start it, or from, prevent it from getting started. So we're going to start 3 o'clock and we come around 
and then we come around again and we're going to end of course at eight o'clock all right so so there you have it we have the uppercase letters we I mean lowercase letters uppercase letters and all of the numbers and I'd like to mention this I, I was gonna since we've gone longer than I thought I was going to write all the letters with a fountain pen but we ran out of we ran out of time so I'm only going to write a couple to show you how the fountain pen works uh, fountain pens are unique because I'll show you something if I lay the fountain let's see if this is inked up good I think it is been haven't used it today if I lay it on this paper and I, I just let it I pull it by its own weight and it's not cooperating here too much there it goes I'm not even pushing on it and notice how that it writes you can write all day with a fountain pen and not even get tired and so you hold the fountain pen just exactly like you do by the way a fountain pen won't work like this it, the tip has to be down this way you can't let me see if you can see it on the picture you can't sideways you can't upside down it has to be this way and like if I was going to write the I'll just write the word the I think you can see it good here T H E it gives you an idea how to use a fountain pen I don't have we don't have time to go on I will say that I buy these uh, I don't know how you pronounce it is it it's a Chinese name or something I think they're called uh, uh, Jinaho something like that anyway I buy these on the internet I get eight of them um, for twelve dollars and they come with a a little thing in here that you I, I can't get it out right now because I only got one hand but it's got a little filler in here and I buy uh, ink maybe I can show you I got ink here yeah I buy this ink right here manuscript ink and you put this down in there and suck it up in there and it's um, washable so if kids get it on them or something like that and I actually have kindergartners and others writing with fountain pens in my classroom they love it and uh, most of them do really good they learn how not to press hard so that they're also um, I get this little this is a dip pen and you just dip it down in there and it writes really good and this is called a I can't remember the company but this tips called a ballpoint tip so I won't they'll it illust demonstrate it but it works really good and the kids like using using that all right well there you go I hope this will be a good help to uh, parents who have children that are left-handed maybe you're left-handed you weren't taught how to write properly with your left hand and you're you're having all kinds of problems and 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 this will really help you out a, a lot here and if you're a teacher and you have to teach kids uh, that write left-handed and then my, my book here my program by the way one of the cool things is I have a whole uh, uh, deal here of words for practicing manuscript and if you can see it I go straight through the alphabet A B C D E F G H I J K right on and then I have words that just use those letters so it can be kind of a handwriting practice building handwriting fluency make sure that when a student is copying a word for example say the word here is, is wedding W D D I N G you want the student to look at the word wedding and really look at it and then write w-e-d-d-i-n-g without looking back up and there's a Marilyn Jagger Adams explains that there's a lot of stuff sometimes it's just a habit but if you want them to learn how to spell they've got to learn to look at the word and when they turn their head away hold it in their short-term memory long enough to write it and you will be amazed at how they're reading and spelling improves when you teach them how to write a word at a glance and as time goes on my students get where they I can write a whole sentence on the board and they can turn around and write that sentence without even looking up at the letters and that's very very important so anyway this is Don Potter signing off and I hope that this video is going to prove very valuable to uh, everybody